now today, God. Move by your spirit, God. Touch every person, God. You know those that are ill and that are dealing with uh, loss of loved ones, God. You know every situation that is faced by everyone right now. God, I pray you encourage those that have lost loved ones right now, God. Hallelujah. God, I pray you strengthen them now in the midst of all of this, God. That again, from somewhere, God, hallelujah, not from somewhere, but from your spirit comes that peace that passes all understanding, God. That we may be able to continue on in the midst of our grief. God, I pray for those that are recovering and that are still battling with illness and other things, God. Those that are sick and shut in and that can't come out, Father God. I pray, God, that you continue to move and restore them now, Father God. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, God. I pray for everyone, even in this place today, God. I pray that you continue to move by your spirit. Those that are watching via Facebook Live, Father God, I pray that right now every word from my mouth be inspired by the Holy Spirit and that it not come from my own thoughts, imagination, and understanding, God, but God, let these words be like seeds that find good soil in the hearts and the mind of the men and women and children that are in this place, God. And God, let these seeds then take root in us and begin to grow and produce fruit, God, that we are able to partake of for ourselves and then also share with others that we may all be forever changed. In the mighty name of Jesus, somebody say amen. Amen. Can you just say the name of Jesus one more time? Jesus. Hallelujah. In the midst of this world, in the midst of everything, that name is a sweet, sweet name. Hallelujah. When you can't sleep at night, just say Jesus. Hallelujah. When you're not feeling well, say Jesus. When things not going right at work, just say Jesus. That song says, say the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I'm not going to sing it. That's coming out on my album later this year. But that song, say the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. God is a good God, and I'm so glad to have you here. We even say Jesus to the AC system now in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Woo-woo. Jesus. We thank you, though, for being here and for joining us today. And so we're talking about right now in a series of, it's just a simple one. As I was studying, God began to talk to me and say, remind the people who I am. Remind the people who I am. So this series is just entitled, God Is. And then it's dot, dot, dot after that. And so last week, we talked about the fact that God is our shield, our glory, and the lifter of our heads. We came from Psalms 3 that the psalmist David wrote and said, but thou, O Lord, art shield for me, my glory, and the lifter of mine head. In this portion of scripture, David was lamenting. We said that this was a lament song, which means he was pouring out. It was passionate. He was not holding back. He was sharing with God what we, he was going through. And so in the first couple of verses of this psalm, he's simply just presenting his problem to God. Not that God doesn't see it and doesn't know, but David is pouring himself out and saying, God, look at what's happening to me. Look at what I'm going through. He was presenting his problem to God. And then in the next couple of verses, he turns and flips the scripts and he begins to put his problems and his circumstances on notice about who his God is. He begins to tell his situation and circumstances about this God that he serves. Then he moves on later in that verse and begins to prophesy and speak and begins, decides that he's going to take his rest in spite of all the enemies that's hunting him. In spite of everybody that's after him trying to kill him and take his throne, he's going to lay down and take his rest. And he's going to let God fight for him. And so in that scripture, we talked about the fact that when we're facing problems and we feel like giving up or we're in despair, we've got to remember who God is. When we feel seriously let down by life and, and we have to remember that there is still hope and that hope is found in God because David said three things in that Psalms. He says, when no one would help me, God was my shield. Somebody say shield. Number two, he said, when David had nothing to treasure and to be excited about, God was his glory. Somebody say glory. 
And number three, he said, when no one would encourage me, God himself would encourage me and lift my head. Somebody say lift my head. Hallelujah. So we talked about the fact that God is those things. He's our shield. He's our glory. He's the lifter of our head. And he has put us in this place, in this season, in this time for us to share the good news with other people that no matter what you got going on in life, I will lift your head from those situations. When you lift your head, what are we talking about? We talk about what that what the head does, the body follows. So we can't stay focused on our problems. Like now, my head is down. I'm looking at all my problems. But when I shift and lift my eyes to Jesus, when I lift my eyes to God, everything else has to follow. Hallelujah. We talked about the fact, and we said these affirmations, that we were created to worship God. We were born to do the will of God. And then we said, and we were created for such a time as this. For such a time as this, right now, 2021, with everything that's going on around you, you need to know you were created for such a time as this. Hallelujah. So today, I want to share with you and begin to talk with you about the second part of what God is. And it's not really the second part, it's just the second installment of what God is. That God is omnipotent. You've heard that word before, right? Omnipotent. Can you say omnipotent? omnipotent. Hallelujah. Listen, this is a word I've heard so many times throughout my church going years of my life. And I said, I want to slow it down because sometimes somebody's listening that doesn't know and hasn't heard. You all might be well versed, but there might be somebody that doesn't know. So listen, omnipotence and what that means. Omnipotence means all powerful, all powerful. It means that God can do what he wants. It means he's not subject to physical limitations like we are. It means that being omnipotent, God has the power over wind, over water, over gravity, over physics. He does not have to obey those, law, those laws. And it's, it, it means that God's power is infinite, means it never ends, it's limitless, means it goes everywhere. So when we think about God's, that word omnipotent, I want you to think of all powerful. We got some young people in the house today. I don't know who you think the most powerful superhero is. Who's the most powerful superhero you can think of, whether it be DC or Marvel, whoever, whoever it may be, who's the baddest? So, shout out a name. Who's the baddest? Somebody say Thor, somebody say Iron Man, somebody say Superman. These are all superheroes, right? But guess what? None of them are all powerful. All of them got weaknesses. And if you know the weakness, you know how to take them out. Superman is my favorite hero, but his weakness is what? Kryptonite. If you get kryptonite near him he turned he don't just turn into a regular dude that's what's so funny he turned into a sorry 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 dude like extra weak and extra everything I was like man you at least if he just became normal but my goodness so listen our God that he doesn't have it he is all powerful you can bring kryptonite to him you can bring whatever you want it's not gonna face him because he is all powerful his power never ceases. In Scripture, we see the fullness of God presented in Jesus Christ. And so that's why you see Jesus walking on water. That's why you see him healing the sick and raising the dead, because the fullness of this omnipotent power that God has is represented in the person of Jesus Christ. Now, I want you to get excited about something because we got Jesus Christ living on the inside of us. We got Jesus living on the inside of us. And so that means, guess what? We got some access to that power, to that power. Let's, let's look at it. Listen, in this portion of, of, of Scripture here, in Ephesians 3.20, we know this doxology that is, is said oftentimes. And what a doxology is, it's just really like a, a form of praise, a, a, a saying that brings praise, things to God. So you've seen this before. It says, now to him who is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all, somebody say all, all we ask or think, 
according to the power that works in us. I want you to remember that part, the power that works in us. To him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. Amen. His power endures to all generations forever and ever. That's how powerful he is. It never runs out. Your cell phone needs to be recharged daily, doesn't it? Remember flip phones, they didn't have to get charged every day. But smartphones got to get charged every day. Uh, uh, eventually, your battery in your car has to be replaced. Your watch batteries got to be replaced. There's no everlasting battery. If it is, they just hadn't told us because they want us to keep buying batteries. But God's power never runs out. It's there for each generation after generation after generation after generation. Listen, this portion of scripture comes from, uh, again, Ephesians 3, and it's entitled Appreciation of the Mystery, of the Mystery. Now, the mystery that, and Paul wrote this, the mystery that Paul is referring to is that salvation was not just for the Jews, but that it was for everyone through Christ Jesus. Now, it's not a mystery to us, but it was back then, and he said, this is what God has enabled me to do. He's taken me from someone that was persecuting the saints, and he is now uh, equipping me to minister and bless and work with the saints because I understand the mystery that this power that, the, that God has through Jesus Christ is not just for the Jews, it's for everyone that wants it. So as a result of receiving Christ, we now can be connected to God's love and his power. We are not. It's not that God didn't love us before we were saved, but when we receive Christ, now we're more connected to that love and access to that power. So listen, at this point in time when Paul was writing this portion of Scripture, Ephesians 3, the religious leaders in Jerusalem, they were very threatened by his teaching and Christ's teachings. And so they didn't believe that Jesus was the Messiah. And what they did is they pressured the Romans to go and arrest Paul and bring him to trial for treason and for causing rebellion among the Jews. Kind of the same thing they did to Jesus, right? So they go and they convince the Romans, arrest this Paul guy, put him on house arrest. Uh, he's out here preaching and teaching all this stuff, the same stuff y'all crucified Jesus for. He out here doing it again. So I need y'all to come get him. This is what the religious leaders did in Jerusalem. Paul had, what he did was he, at this point in time as he was writing this, he had appealed his, um, his case to the Roman emperor, and he was just simply awaiting trial. So he's on house arrest, can't go out and do a whole lot of stuff, got to stay around the house. They didn't have the ankle bracelet then, but he had to stay in that house. Somebody was standing at that door. If he left, they uh-uh, you can't go back, you can't go. So he had appealed his case, and so he's writing this to them. And so it says that even though he was under arrest, Paul had a firm belief that God was yet in control. Uh, he had a firm belief that God was in control, not of just life, but of, of all that's even happening to him at that moment. Paul had an understanding about this power that God had, this omnipotent power, that he wasn't worried about not being able to go somewhere or do something. He simply said, I'll rest in that power right here. I'll write and I'll do what God has called me to do right here. So in Ephesians 3, 14 through 21, we're going to look at this from the message version. It says, God's promises, he promises love and power to his family, and that family is the church through the Holy Spirit. This is what Paul is writing in verse 14. It says, my response to this mystery he's talking about, that this power is accessible to us, my response is to get down on my knees before the Father. This magnificent Father who parses out all heaven and earth. I ask him to strengthen you by his Spirit, not a brute strength, but a glorious inner strength, but a, uh, uh, that Christ will live in you as you open the door and invite him in. So what Paul was saying is, listen, I, God, I want you to strengthen them in the midst of what they're going through. I want you to strengthen them. Your omnipotent power is powerful. It never runs out. I want you to charge them with that power through the Holy Spirit, not a power that makes them think they big and strong and they can go fight the Romans. 
but an inner strength that helps them understand we can endure even though. Anybody need a power like that that says, I can endure even though? Whatever comes after your even though. I can endure even though. This is the kind of power that Paul was talking about through the spirit. So this glorious inner strength that, that, that as they opened their hearts to Christ, the Holy Spirit empowered them for the work they had to do. And so this is God's promise, not just to them, but to us as we come into relationship with Christ, as we accept Christ into our heart, as we accept the Holy Spirit and ask him to come into us. He enables us, empowers us through this same power that lab was way back then is still available to us now. It goes on to say that we can receive this blessing by staying in contact with other believers in the body of Christ. Now, I never saw this part in the scripture before, but as I was studying in my notes, I said, oh, that's interesting. So everybody that think they can do it all by themselves, all out on their own, they are not understanding. It says in verse 17, it says, and I asked him that with both feet planted firmly on love, you'll be able to take in with all followers of Jesus the extravagant dimensions of Christ's love. Paul now is talking about the fact that, listen, you need to be connected with the other believers. And I want to verify this and clarify this. This is not about you coming to church or not coming to church. It's not about that. You can be connected to people and you're not, maybe you're not able to come to church, but yet you are still connected to other believers. Maybe you plug in on the Sunday school or you get into the Bible studies or whatever it is. Maybe your work schedule doesn't allow you to come to uh, church, but you still stay connected through various methods. That is what's most important nowadays. I want you to get that because I don't want anybody out there to think, oh, he's trying to tell us we got to come to church. But he says, stay in contact, stay connected. It was a while back, God gave me a word. This was years ago. He talked about the fact that what the enemy loves to do is to get us into isolation. Uh, he loves to get us into isolation. And so I forget all the other words, but it was some different series of steps that happened that we end up uh, from isolation. Well, before we get to that isolation, but we end up through a phase of hallucination and, and all kind of other nations going on. And eventually we end up with isolation where we don't want to talk to nobody, don't want to be around nobody. If it was a church hurt or if it was whatever that happened, we just end up isolated. And then the enemy has us right where he wants us. We're not connected with anybody because we're mad at the church. We're mad at people and all this stuff. So we decide we're going to do it alone. We try to go against our own nature and say, I don't need nobody. When we all were created to be in relationship with people. And God. And so Paul is saying, listen, watch out for this now. Don't, don't you think you can just be out there on your own, but you can receive this blessing. And what is this blessing? The blessing of the power of God in your life by staying connected, by having your feet planted firmly on love, treating people right, loving people right. It says, then you'll be able to take in with all the followers of Jesus the dimensions of Christ's love. Because Christ's love is what we need in order to do what he's called us to do. So again, when we isolate ourselves from other believers and we try to go it alone, we cut ourselves off from the power of God. We cut ourselves off from that power. I'm not saying that, oh, you're by yourself somewhere and you praying for somebody and you got to call somebody to come join you. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying, again, when you intentionally do not connect, you intentionally don't want to be in relationship with other believers. You're, cu you're cutting yourself off from the power of God. So I need you to say this. We got to stay connected. We got to stay connected. We got to stay connected because even if you don't like the person that's sitting three rows in front of you or behind you, we got to stay connected. Look, I knew somebody was going to turn around and look. I knew somebody was going to, who look, who backed up? Oh, man, how he knew I ain't like them. But listen. We must stay connected. It is through our connection that we see and can flow and can operate in the power that God has given us and enabled us to do. This is what's important. As we go on and look at the next portion of this scripture, Paul says that God's love and power are total, meaning they are everything. He says, now listen, 
Reach out and experience the breath. Test its length. Plumb the depths. Rise to the heights. Live full lives, full in the fullness of God. What Paul is talking to us now about is, is reaching out again and flowing in this love. He's, he's talking about flowing in this love. Because what Paul wants us to get and to understand, uh-oh, I hit the wrong button. But what Paul wants us to get and understand is that this love and this power that God has is, again, it's limitless. And so if we say the word all-powerful, what does all mean? Everything, right? So, and, and it means that the fact that it reaches to every corner of our experience. Some of us think we have experienced something and gone through something that God's power can't deliver us from. And that's just not true. Whatever that hurt, whatever that pain, God's power can deliver us from that. It can enable us. Now, it doesn't take it away and make you forget it, but it enables you to keep on moving on again in spite of what has happened. So it reaches every corner. It's with, covers the breadth of our own experience and reaches out to the world. So it goes beyond just what we're dealing with into the world around us. The length of it, it says, it continues the full length of our lives past us into our children and our children's children. This power and this love is what it's talking about. Its depth reaches to the depths of discouragement and despair. As we just said, you're never too low for this power, for this love to reach you. And it rises to the heights of our celebration and our elations. Even in our good time, we see the power of God there. So he's talking to us about, listen, reach out and experience this type of power. Don't just live a life. He's saying live full lives. What is a full life? A life that is empowered by God. A life that's empowered by God that is not based on your situation and your circumstance, but a life that says, you know what? I might only have two pennies to my name, but I'm blessing God for them two pennies. A life that says, you know what? I might have been born with physical uh, disadvantages and ailments, but I'm blessing God for every bit of breath that I have. We, this is the fullness that he's talking about, that when we stay connected, that when we operate in the power of God and we reach out and experience his breath. See, God wants us to understand, we said it, that his power is limitless. But what a man do? What do we do? We take that power and make limits on it based on who we are. Well, God, I don't have that education, so your power can only do this much in me. Don't that sound crazy? Well, God, I don't have the money, so your power that's limitless and omnipotent, it can only go this far with me. And God is waiting for us to change our mindset and understand, no, I want to fulfill the fullness of his power. So, God, in spite of my being broke, in spite of my health, in spite of whatever I ain't got, your power is able to do any and everything. And so, God, I want to live the fullness of of your power. Anybody want to live in the fullness of God's power today? Listen, the fullness of God's power is what Paul is saying. Reach out. Experience how deep it is, how high it goes, how wide it is, how much it, it, it can do in your life. That power it's not just to be used on Sunday mornings, but this is power to live every day of our lives. Too many of us, again, we separate life and we segment life and we don't, we don't see how the scriptures and how the word of God is true for us every single day in every situation of our lives. That's what I find myself doing, saying, God, I'm, I'm dealing with this. How is your word connected to what is going on? How many of you, you, when you come to church, you can appreciate when the word kind of speaks to your situation or helps you see better, right? Well, listen, when you don't see that at all, when you can't make any connection to what the word of God is saying, to what you're going through, I want you to understand that yet and still, it is still God's word. It's still as good as gold and better. It, is still, it still possesses the power that it needs. So listen, as we, as we focus on this thing of that, the fact that God is omnipotent, I want you to get that that power doesn't have to just be limited 
by our situations and circumstances, by where we are in life. God's omnipotent power is there and it's available for us to take advantage of, Paul is saying. That's why he's telling us and encouraging us to reach out and experience it. Reach out and experience the power. Reach out and, and ask God to do in your life what only he can do. Reach out and experience the fullness that God uh, expected you to, to have in life. Again, he would not have sent his son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross if he didn't intend us to be able to walk in the fullness of his power. Now, none of us will ever be omnipotent, right? We won't be all powerful. But listen, it's, like, it's just like this. Like your, just as we said, your cell phone can't stay charged forever. It has to continue to get plugged into that power. Well, it's the same with us. The more we stay connected with other believers and like-minded people and we stay in our word and we, we pray and we study, we keep connecting to that power source. And that's what enables us to be empowered. It enables us to be empowered day after day, day after day. I want somebody to try. Don't charge your cell phone tonight and see how long you get with it tomorrow. It's the same thing. Don't read and don't, don't pray and don't be in, in God's word and don't be connected with other believers and see how long you last in this Christian walk. Because you, it, it's not possible. You got to stay connected to the power source so that you can be empowered and experience that power so that when that power needs to come out of you into somebody else, you got enough to spare, right? They got cell phones that can charge another cell phone. Now, you lay it on and it gives it some of its battery. That's what believers function like. I'm going through. Man, I need somebody. So you come on with your power and, and hook up with the power I got, and I get a little bit more power, and we get charged together. My God. It's this power that God wants us to live in, to walk in day by day. So he says, experience this power fully. You don't have to have a title in front of your name to experience this power. You don't even have to be an adult, young folk, to experience this power. I Trust me, I know. When I was in school, sometimes I didn't understand. I laid hands on my head and said, God, help me to understand. And boom, before you know it, I'm, uh, I'm getting it. I'm getting it. God, moving this situation in my life. I remember when I needed a car. Because my mom and dad were busy. They were pastors here. And so we lived a good ways from West Orange High School. And so I would be out there after football practice sometimes to 8 o'clock at night waiting for somebody to come pick me up because they've been here all day at the church, running and doing and doing it. So I ain't got a ride home. And I said, God, I can't live like this. This is stressful to a teenager. I need a car. <laughs> I need a car. So what happened is my grandfather bought Michael this Ford Escort. And so Michael drove it till he left to go to the Army. Then it got passed down to Jam. Jam drove it for a little while, and then she got her newer version of the Ford Escort. So that car then became mine. By the time it got to me, boy, the muffler was hanging low. The seat, the, the passenger seat wouldn't sit up. You had to put a brick behind it. You had to lift up the door to close it, to get in and out. It was all that kind of stuff. But I didn't mind saying I got me a car. I ain't got to be sitting out here to 8 o'clock at night. So my friends would be laughing at us and say, babe, we can always know when you come to school because we hear that. <laughs> Muffler scraping on the speed bumps as I'm pulling into the car parking lot. But it was all right. I remember praying and saying, God, I need something to help this work, and I remember that answer to that prayer. Now then, listen, the story gets even better, because after about a year or so of driving that car, uh, I say, God, we got to do something. I can't get no, I can't get no girls with this car. <laughs> that wasn't a reason, but no. So I say, God, this car is starting to really fall apart. It's not just cosmetic stuff. It's having some serious issues. It got leaky, uh, a water leaking into the head gasket. I said, we can't do this, God. I need something different. And I saw my neighbor. They pulled into the house, and they had this little truck. I said, that's a nice truck, and that's all I said about it. But then one Saturday, I was off work and my parents, I was, we were sitting there talking. And so we decided to just go down the street to the Toyota dealership that was there on uh, Colonial at the time, Highway 50. 
And we walked in, and so we looked at stuff. And I, at that moment, when we was at Toyota, I was like, oh, I want one of them Toyota trucks. I know that's what that was. I want one of those trucks. This was a Saturday afternoon. So lo and behold, we go and we talk with the guy, uh, getting all kind of stuff worked out. He says, well, listen, if you just got this. So I was like, well, I got $300 saved, and I got a car that can be traded in. And so we were able to trade in that car, get that $300. Uh, and I went home with a brand new truck. Nobody else had ever driven it before. And I said, God, look at your power. These are things in my life that help me see the power and the faithfulness of God. It may not be a big deal, but it's like, yeah, I, I get, I'm starting to get it. I'm starting to get it when you, when you pray. See, my heart was in the right place. And I say, God, I'm, I'm not being greedy. I just, I need this so I can get around. I got to go to work. I got to be here. I can't rely on my parents. None of my friends got cars. They all trying to ride with me. So, Lord, I need something. And God was faithful. So his power is limitless. Somebody say limitless. It's not just for the big, deep situations. It's for everyday issues like that as well. His power. It enables us and helps us. And so I just remember thanking God. And I remember that night. Now, this is the other funny part. That car was a stick shift, and I did not know how to drive a stick shift at all, that truck. So I'm sitting. Uh, what happened is the guy drove me home. He was showing me all the way. And when we got to the house, he took the Escort and drove it back. I hope he made it. I don't know, because at that point in time, it was, it was really a mess. So I'm sure he made it back to the dealership. But I was just sitting out there in the back of my truck looking up at the sky. The sky was so full of all these stars. And I was like, God, you are amazing. How did this happen? Woke up this morning with a busted broke car. Now I'm sitting here in a brand new truck. And I'm, what, 17 years old. My God. What a blessing it was. And I just began to, at that moment, looking at the sky, I was like, man, God, you are big. You are powerful. You are awesome. I just, I had that experience. I'll never forget that experience that night. I've never seen that many stars again in the sky. It was a clear night, and it was just like, boom, right there. And I experienced God's power and his goodness in that poem. And I can talk about different things in my life, but I'm, I'm just sharing this because I want you to know about his power, that it's available to you. It's available to all of us that walk with Christ. He's not stingy. He's not going to say, well, I did that for David because I like him more than you. He's not going to do that. He'll do for you. What he's done for others, he'll do for you, right? Hallelujah. And so that power that enabled. Now, that next morning, I woke up a whole uh, hour early because I only lived about 10 minutes from work. But I said, I got to get on the road about an hour ahead because I don't know how to drive a stick. So I was out there for that first week. I was stripping gears and doing all kind of stuff until I got it. But the same thing, I would say, God, you got to help me learn how to drive this truck. My dad got in there and helped me a little bit. Uh, different people showed me different stuff, but God showed me through different people how to enjoy the blessing he had given me. Amen? His power, it extends. He gave Bishop the power to have patience with me, learning how to drive that truck. My goodness. So we must rely on that power and experience the fullness of his power. And parents, this is a good way for you to share with your children, your grandchildren about the power of God. The fact that he can operate right there in their problems and their situations. Sometimes we get caught up in our lives and all that we're going through and we forget about the fact that they're going through stuff too. And if we can help them see the power of God operating in their life, all that does is build them and encourage them. You can help them know, no, you ain't the one that's so smart. God gave you that. No, you're not the one that's so athletic. God bless you with that. His power operating in us, it gives us opportunities again to witness even to our children and our grandchildren, those around us. So I want to encourage you to reach out and experience the fullness of God's power today. And as we look at this next portion of the verse, this is that doxology. And it says the fact that God can do anything. Somebody say anything. God can do anything. Now, when I say anything, we've been talking in our Bible study on Wednesdays about what our worries are. We've been talking about the fact that not to worry. And so when I say anything, I want you to think about that, that thing right now. Whatever it is, there may be several things. Uh, if we think about last week with David, he had several things going on. 
So when I say anything, if it's a health situation, if it's a financial situation, if it's a relationship issue, if whatever it is, God can do, somebody say it with me, anything. You hate your job, God can do anything. He can help you love it or help you find another one. He can do anything. You got an unsaved loved one that been unsaved for their whole life, and you've been praying for them for the last 20 years. God can do anything. I need y'all to say it with me now. God can do anything. You got a sickness that you've been praying for for years, and God has, has not changed it or done anything yet, but he's yet giving you the grace to work through it. But you still believe to this day that God can do anything. Come on now. You got some hard head grandchildren and children, boy, it just seemed like the seeds that you planted them not being watered and they're not growing. But God can do, you better say it, anything. Whatever your issue is, God can do anything. He is omnipotent. He is all powerful. So it says God can do anything, you know, far more than you could ever imagine or guess or request in your wildest dreams. The things you've been praying for, how do you hope they're going to turn out? This says that God can do far more than even how you can dream them turning out. God did far more with that old escort into a new truck than I ever even believed could happen. God has done far more with my life than I ever believed could happen. I was thinking about yes, I was like, man, I am so blessed. And I'm not talking about stuff. I said, I'm so blessed to have my wife and my children. I'm so blessed to have my parents and my family. I'm so blessed to have known my grandparents. And, and I've just been thinking about it. I say, I, I, you know, there's a lot of people that can't say they knew their grandfather, had him in their life, and their father. I say, God, I'm just blessed. You've done far more than I could ever imagine. And this is what happens with us. Sometimes our situations help make us forget about the fact that God can do anything. They make us forget about that. Because we like, well, what that words in that book going to do for me right now? I ain't got no grocery in my um, refrigerator when I go home. Preacher talking about God can do anything. He got some food to eat. Y'all know that's how people act. You know, when you're going through, you be mad, right? You know that's how people act. But I'm telling you, God can do anything. He can do far more than we could ever imagine or guess or even request in our wildest dreams, it says. That's what makes me excited. Because oftentimes I think about what God has done. I say, God, that was so much better than my plan. That was so much better than what I was thinking. That was so much better. Than, than what I could even imagine. It goes on to say, how does it not, uh, how does it not by pushing, I'm sorry, he, can't read, he does it not by pushing us around, but by working within us, his spirit deeply and gently within us. So in other words, God is a gentleman. He's not going to force it. He ain't going to make it, but he says he does it by gently working within us. Gently massaging those areas, those things. His spirit deep and gently within us, working that power, working that power. And then it goes on to say, glory to God in the church, glory to God in the Messiah and Jesus. Glory down all the generations, glory through all the millennial. Oh, yes. Letting you know that that same power is going to be there for your children your children's children. You don't have to worry. All you got to do is do your job. Do what God told you to raise them the way they're supposed to be raised. Teach them and, and show them love and, and continue to speak the truth in love with them and let the power of God do what it is intended to do. You walk in the fullness of that power in your life. You walk in it. Don't worry about it if they're going to get it, but you walk in it. You keep walking in that fullness every day of your life to the last day of your life, to the last breath of your life. Walk in the fullness of that power. Experience it. Don't, listen, does it make sense to have access to something that can change everything, but you just say, ah, I ain't going to use it. Does that make sense to anybody? 
if that makes sense to you, we need you down here on the altar. We're going to pour this whole bottle of oil on you until it don't make sense no more. Listen, it makes no sense to have access to all that you need. But say, I don't want to take advantage of that today. That's what we do as Christians. When we forget about the fact that our God is omnipotent, there's nothing he can't do. He is all powerful. He doesn't have to obey the laws of science and all that stuff. He created it. So he is God. He's in control. We need miracles. Guess what? It's the power of God that would do it. We want to see our world change. It's the power of God that's going to do it. It's not us and all of our ideas. It's the power of God operating through us. So all we got to do is say, God, I want to walk in the fullness of your power. We ain't going to lose our head and try to be omnipotent and and be like Lucifer, want to take everything over. We're not going to do that. But we're going to say, God, I'm going to operate in your power. I'm going to stay connected to the people of God. I'm going to stay connected to your word. I'm going to stay connected to you, God, so that I can operate in your power. I need you to get this today down in your spirits because we're still talking about the fact that you were created for such a time as this. You were created for such a time as what we're going through right now in 2021. You were created for such a time as this. You sitting at home watching me in your bed right now. You may not be feeling well, but you were created yet for such a time as this. God wants you to hear that, that his power is limitless. And this is the other thing that's encouraging. Even when we were going through the time that we couldn't come in and meet, um, and what I began to say and what God began to talk to me about is, listen, the church is going to have to be the church when they can't be at church. And so guess what? They can hook up on Zoom call and my power will still work. They can get on the conference call. My power still works. You can send an email to somebody encouraging them with the word of God and that power still works. God's power, when I say it's limitless, it doesn't just have to happen in the physical realm. It can work over the radio waves, over the microwaves, over the email, through a text. God, you think technology is new to God? Mm -mm. He said, my power worked through all that stuff. You're the only one that's limited. You're limited by those things. You don't think it's going to work. But if you just do what I'm telling you to do, experience the fullness of my power. What this verse and what this portion of Scripture helps us to see is that neither God's love nor his power is limited by our human imagination or our circumstances. I want you to get that. God is so powerful. And I thought about this. I said, God is so powerful that even though we all have free will, every one of us in here as a human being, we have what's called free will. We talked about this a little bit last week. The fact that we can make whatever decision we want to make, God is not going to make us make the right decisions. But this is a note about how powerful he is. Even with all of us making bad, messed up decisions throughout our life, his will yet gets done in the end. That's how powerful he is. He said, I'm so powerful, I'll give you some power called free will, but I'm still going to have my way. Isn't that awesome? God is powerful. That's like you telling your kids, y'all clean up the kitchen, y'all can do whatever you want to do. Y'all can pour gravy on the wall if you want, but at the end of the day, it's still going to be clean. That doesn't work that way with us. That ain't going to work. But God say, listen, I'm giving y'all free will. Y'all make decisions you're going to make. I put things in place. Decisions have consequences. And at the end of the day, my will will still be done. That's how powerful he is. He give us some of that power, but still it's going to work out. My God. It's even to the fact that uh, the circumstances, again, sometimes in life, what life can do in surface as make us wonder if, if God has lost control of this world sometimes. Some people are at a place where they kind of thinking that. Is God really in control? Uh, it, it makes us feel sometimes when we look at what's going on in the news that God is not all powerful. But I'm here to explain and help you understand. And what Paul was trying to tell us is that we got to remember that no matter what happens in life, God still directs the affairs of the world. God is still omnipotent, and you and I, through the Holy Spirit, have access to God's power. We've got to walk in that fullness. We've got to invite the fullness of his power in our lives. That's all we got to do. Say, God, I, I, I want to be connected to your power. I want to be a spirit-led believer that walks in your power day after day. 
This is what our world needs. Our world doesn't need another church built. Our world doesn't really need uh, another pastor right now. I'm talking about like another big pastor that come along. Even what, what our world needs is spirit-led believers that walk in the fullness of God's power. That's what this is all about. So the question that I have for you today is, will you walk in the fullness of God's power? Will you invite the fullness of God's power into your life? Again, if it doesn't make sense to you to have access to something that can change anything and you not use it, then you need to invite that power into your life. Now, this power doesn't mean you become a perfect person. This power doesn't mean that you always right and everybody is wrong. This power doesn't mean any of that. It just simply means that my po this power enables me to do what God has called me to do in spite of. I want you to stand with me now because I'm closing. I want you to stand and I want you to really ask yourself, have I taken advantage of the fullness of this power? Am I operating in the fullness of God's power in my life? And when I asked myself that question, I said, no, I'm not. I'm not even near what I should be doing and operating in. I said, God, I'm not even close. I don't even know if I'm 25% of what I need to be. Because I let things bother me. I let things worry me. I let things trouble me. And that, that's not walking in the fullness of his power. I say, God, I want to walk in the fullness of your power. I want to be ready in season and out of season. I want to be filled with your power. You are omnipotent, God, and there's nothing you can't do. So it starts with us remembering that God is that and that he gave us access to that through his son, Jesus Christ. And so as we are in relationship with Christ, we have access to that power. God is omnipotent. He's all powerful. God can do anything. There's nothing too hard for God. There's no problem too big or too small that God can't handle. And he wants us to take advantage of that. Would you pray with me today? God, I thank you for the people that are here today, those that are watching. And God, we thank you that you have given us access to this power. God, you are all powerful. You are omnipotent. There is none like you. You are so powerful that you gave us free will, and yet your will still gets done in the end. So God, today we open up our hearts and our minds and say we want to walk in the fullness of the power that you have supplied to us, God. We want to walk in the fullness. We want to reach out and experience its depth and its height and its width, God. We want to know, God, that, that we are doing what you've called us to do and that we're not doing it in our own power, but through the power that the Holy Spirit gives us. God, help us be a people today that flow and function in your power, God. Hallelujah, God, those things that we put on our mind when we said that God can do anything, whatever the anything is in our life, God, help us to look at that situation no longer the same, but help us to look at it through the eyes of your power, God, through the fact that you love us so much that you gave us a way to walk in spite of God. So, God, whatever it may be that might be trying to hold us back or that limits us, God, we want to break free of that now in the name of Jesus through the power that you've given us, God. God, we're not asking you to make everything go away. We're just saying, God, be faithful and help us to do what you've called us to do in spite of. In spite of whatever it is, in spite of whatever that thing may be, God, we want to operate in the fullness of your power, God. God, we're going to watch the words we speak and what we say. We're going to stop saying negativity and bringing negative things into our life. And we're going to stop talking about what we don't have and what, what, it, what was not worth. Working, God, I know yet you can fix it, God. Everything we don't have, God, I know you can supply, God. Everything that we stand in need of, God, I know you are faithful to provide it now, God. Through your power, which is limitless, God. Hallelujah. We're not going to limit our lives anymore with the words that come out of our mouths. But we're going to open ourselves up to the fullness of God. 
by speaking your word, by speaking your goodness, God, by speaking the situation into existence, God. Hallelujah. We're going to do that day after day, God. We're going to operate in the fullness of your power. We're going to believe your word, God. We're going to search and seek how the scriptures can, can, can apply to every part of our life, God. We're going to stay connected, God, to the people of God, to the house of God, to, to the, the mission of God, to the call of God. We're going to stay connected, Father God, so that we can continue to operate in your power today, God. This world stands in need of a people that are spirit led, but not led by their own spirits, led by the spirit of God, that are empowered by the spirit of God, that know how to reach heaven, that know how to touch God. Our world is in need of that. So God, help us to be your people that walk in that fullness, that walk in that fullness, God. Hallelujah, that we walk in the fullness of your power. God, we want to do everything you've called us to do before we leave this place. We want to accomplish all that you have called us to accomplish, God, before we leave this place. So, God, help us to walk in the fullness. And, God, I think about the young people today that are back in school now and dealing in this world that they're in, Father God. I pray, God, that you help them understand you are powerful. You are omnipotent. There is nothing that you cannot do. God, help them to understand that they can do all things through Christ who strengthens them. So if they got struggles in different areas, Father God, in academics, whether it be math or science or reading, God, I pray you expose them to your power now by opening their eyes, God. God, if they're dealing with bullying and issues in school, God, I pray you expose them to your power, God, that it empowers them, God, to stand up, Father God, and believe what you said. It's not easy being a teenager and a child, God. And sometimes as adults, we forget that. So, God, I cover them now in the name of Jesus, that every psychological, mental challenge that may be trying to come against them, God, that as they go through these adolescent years, these teenage years, God, they don't lose track of who you are, but they see your power and your faithfulness operating even in their lives. God, I thank you for what you're doing and how you're doing it. I pray you continue to be uh, God in their lives, God, and in our lives. We give you all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. In the mighty name, somebody say amen. In the mighty name of Jesus, amen. I need to be obedient real quick. If I can just lay hands on those that want to touch, that need to experience power. Particularly, I want to lay hands on our youth as well. This is our fourth Sunday. Don't worry, I'm not going to put on my mask. I'm just going to lay hands on you, all right? But if you need a touch from God, I want you to come down.
Hallelujah. Amen. We want to walk in the fullness of God's power. Amen. I want you to be encouraged today. God is, somebody say it with me, omnipotent. Hallelujah. We talked about the fact that God is our shield, our glory to lift up our head. And now today, God is omnipotent. And that power is not just limited to him. He's given us access to it. So whatever you got going on today, put it in God's hands and allow him to do with it what you will. We're going to move right now to our time of giving. I want to prepare your hearts to give as we go here now. We want to thank you for, again, your faithfulness and for your gifts that you have been providing. Um, God has been moving and blessing and opening some doors. Uh, he is doing some great things. I want you to ask you to remember to keep the school in your prayers as well. They'll be starting school tomorrow, El Bethel Christian Academy. They'll be starting school tomorrow. So keep the staff and the students and the parents in your prayers. Again, this new school year with all these different restrictions and things in place, we want to continue to help our students grow academically and spiritually. So lift our staff in prayer. If you do not know this name, Allison Riley Moore, Allison Riley Moore, that is the name of our principal. I want you to keep her in prayer. Allison Riley Moore is the name of our principal. And I believe God has a great work to do through her. So we want to keep her lifted up and encouraged in this time as well. We want to encourage all of you as well. Reach out to those that are around uh, that you know are going through some things. And if you know of something that we don't know, please let us know. We want to continue to keep uh, Deacon Stevens and Sister Ellen Stevens in your prayers, Sister Yvonne Garwood in your prayers. Um, there are some others, again, that were in the hospital that were sick and dealing with some other things. So we want to ask that you continue to keep them in your prayers at this time as well. Uh, those that have lost loved ones, we were here at the funeral yesterday for Minister Hylek's mother, Mrs. Warner, and uh, had a chance to see Charles and uh, Daje and some of the family there. So keep them lifted up in your prayers as well. There's a lot that they are dealing with and going through. But God is able. Amen. God is able and we're excited about what he's doing. Be encouraged. Be encouraged, people of God. That's what this is all about. We want to encourage you. To know that God is yet in control. There's nothing he can't do. So even as you sitting there looking and seeing all this happening, God has been saying, remember who I am. God is. Remember who he is. We're going to stay connected. We want you to be connected through the different things we have going on throughout the week, whether it be our Sunday school or our Bible studies or conference calls or the prayer meetings, even our Youth for Christ Live. Uh, that happens on, on Saturday, every other Saturday. We want you to be connected in whatever way that you can because God is still yet moving. He's still saving souls. He is still doing miracles and, and accomplishing some, some wonderful things in this season. Amen. Did everyone have a chance to give? Oh. Amen. God is good. Amen. All right. Were there any other announcements, Mother Thomas? Has anybody had anything else? No. All right. I want to also say um, thank you to Brother Terrell McFarland. Uh, Terrell McFarland now is going to be helping me out greatly. He's going to be serving as our building property and equipment man, manager, I call him. So he's going to be helping to get all the many issues we have in this place kind of worked out and organized and I told him man it we on Friday it was